Hi students, so welcome to lecture 48 of the aerospace engineering course and today I am going to talk about the V and diagram. Essentially this is a diagram which plots velocity V with respect to load factor N and if you are not familiar with the concept of load factor look at my previous couple of videos because that's where I explain the load factor concept for the turning flight situation which is where the VN diagram becomes useful. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So let us look at the VN diagram. So you can see on the X axis there is V or velocity of the aircraft and on the Y axis there is N or the load factor and N is defined as lift divided by weight. So for example N could range from negative 4 to 8 or even more it could go up to 10, 12 or something like that. And then we have these straight lines here, the three straight lines here in red. These involve the regions for structural damage. And then the two lines in blue, which are the regions corresponding to stall. So essentially the airplane can fly within this particular figure here. So this is a closed boundary in red and blue. And you can fly safely in this region. So I have mentioned this as the safe region and I have put a plane in here so that you know we are talking about aircraft. Now what happens here is that there is a value which is the highest value here that's the positive limit load factor given by this red line and there is a similar red line here which is the negative limit load factor. So these are the upper and lower bounds on the load factor values and what the VN diagram is telling you in a nutshell is that how much load can the aircraft handle? So essentially the region within this closed system or closed curves is the load where the aircraft can safely fly. If you go out of these regions, you will have damage or you will have problems. So we are going to discuss all these different curves and we are going to give the basic fundamentals about how the VN diagram is generated for a given aircraft. So let's start looking at these lines one by one. So let's start with the line AB or rather I should say the curve AB. Now the curve AB essentially corresponds to the value of N max which we obtained in our previous lecture and this is given by half rho V squared CL max divided by W by S. So W by S is the wing loading. So Basically, this is telling you that if you were to fly the aircraft at CL max value for different V infinity values, then you would be on this line here in blue. So this could be thought of the locus of all the points corresponding to CL max for this curve. And essentially, you can plot it by putting in various values for V infinity and then putting in the values for CL max and then getting this curve here. Now, if you go beyond this region here, you are obviously in stall, so you don't want to be there. So let's look at this more closely. For example, here I have given this dot in blue. This is corresponding to CL equals CL max. If you are at some point here, for example, by the dot in green, this corresponds to CL being less than CL max, which is of course perfectly possible and therefore you can fly at this green point. But if you are at this red point, you are stalled, your CL is less than CL max because you have essentially stalled and you don't want to fly in this region. So essentially you will stall here. So this curve in blue essentially acts as a bound. You get all these CL max points here corresponding to different values of the velocity V. So that is why this region beyond this blue line is known as the stall region. So now let's take a look at this line BC and this line BC is essentially coming from structural damage situation. So what happens is that if your value of N or the load factor exceeds this value, then you have too much lift respect to weight. So N is L by W is too high for the structure to handle. So if you have studied any subjects such as strength of materials or mechanics of solid, you know that if your load is too high, then the stresses generated in the system are very high. The principal stresses become very high. And then if you apply any failure criteria, such as the 
on mices or the tresca failure criteria then you are going to get structural failure so structural failure would happen in this kind of region you don't want to go there so the pilot has to limit himself to within this region which is governed by stall and also ensure that he stays within this region so he doesn't want the load factor to go beyond this green line bc that's the structural limit so there is a particular point which has a lot of importance and that is the maneuver point b so i have shown this here this point is at the intersection of this curve here for the stalled region and the structural damage region in red so the blue and the red meet here and this point b is the point which is known as the maneuver point and you can immediately see that the cl value here is cl max and n is also at the highest value so essentially n is going up all the way here and n reaches the highest value here so corresponding to this point is the minimum turn radius and the maximum turn rate which we discussed in the previous two lectures as being very good for maneuverability in turning flight and also in pull up and pull down so if you want to do any of these maneuvers you want to be at this maneuver point b where you are going to get the maximum capability out of the aircraft so the velocity at this maneuver point is also an important concept this velocity is known as the corner velocity so it's given by v star this is the velocity at the maneuver point b so we go to this point b and we draw this dotted line here and so we get v star as the corner velocity so essentially if you want to calculate this corner velocity you turn to the n max equation and now you know that cl is cl max and v infinity is corresponding to this value at b so you can calculate v star is given by this value here so what you need to do is substitute n max here that n max value is the value of n at the point b so if you substitute that you are going to get the corner velocity for this particular aircraft which you are dealing with now what's going to happen is that if you go beyond this corner velocity then structural damage becomes likely if v is greater than v star and n becomes too high so if you are in this region the only possibility would be stall but if you are beyond this v star structural damage is also becoming likely if the pilot for some region or reason takes the aircraft into this region here so he should not be doing that once he has crossed the corner velocity so now let's look at one more line and that's the line cd and this line cd is also related to structural damage because what happens here is that the velocity has become extremely large so i have denoted this velocity as v star star and beyond cd what happens is that half rho v square is too large so the dynamic pressure is too large and therefore all the aerodynamic loads become extremely large and therefore you do not want to exceed this v star star region now the good thing is that this v star star is typically much greater than the v max which you actually get from performance of an aircraft but do remember there are certain maneuvers such as diving flight where a pilot may actually gain too much speed but in that case also whenever structural design is being performed for the aircraft one should ensure that the aircraft is designed such that this kind of speed can be handled so it should always be such that the maximum diving speed is less than v star star and the pilot should know about this particular value because what happens is that sometime fighter pilots and all can subject an aircraft to pretty dramatic maneuvers and they may hit some of these things they may go to a very high point and then they may start a deep dive from there so these are things the engineers have to think about when they are designing any aircraft which is capable of maneuvering flight so now let's look at the negative side of this problem so again that is something which is possible you may have a situation where you have a negative load factor and this happens when the wing is pitched down and so what happens in that case is that you get negative load factor you essentially get a stall situation with that wing being pitched down too much and there is flow separation and all those phenomena take place so again you cannot fly in this particular region here this corresponds to the negative limit load factor and 
it's something you don't want to take part in now typically this region is smaller than the region on the positive side because most of the time the possibility of the aircraft going in this region is relatively less so today's lecture we introduce the very important concept of a vn diagram now if you are designing any aircraft or you are flying any aircraft it's going to be associated with a VN diagram which gives the load limits of the aircraft. So essentially the VN diagram plots the velocity with respect to the load factor and these boundaries are governed by airplane stall and structural damage. We saw that the curves are governed by the stall situation and the lines are governed by the structural damage. So this is a place where aerodynamics meets the structures and both these aspects have to be considered in the design of the aircraft so this is something to keep in mind is that in this course we are discussing a lot about the aerodynamics but aircraft structures also plays a very important role in aerospace engineering now if i get time i'll probably make a lecture set on that sometime in the future so we can also see that as far as civilian aircraft or transports are concerned typically the load factors are low they may be up to 2.5 or something like that but if you are dealing with aircraft such as fighters then they may have high load factors and therefore you have to design them for high load factor and you have to also account for any deep dive possibility in those aircraft so pilots often subject the aircraft to the limits in these situations and you want the aircraft to hold in those situations we also saw the important point which is the maneuver point where the value of load factor was maximum and there was a certain velocity associated with that point that is known as the corner velocity so the equation of the corner velocity is given by this box in blue and the equation for the max load factor is given by the box in yellow so these two equations are important because very often you may need to calculate the corner velocity of a given aircraft and in that kind of situation you can use this particular equation here if you are given the value of n max which is the maximum load factor cl max which you as effectively know from the aircraft aerodynamics the density and the wing loading then you can very easily calculate this particular value so that was the lecture for today so i think we are done with turning flight so we looked at three different possibilities we looked at the turning flight which typically takes place and we also looked at the pull up and the pull down maneuvers that is we looked at level turn pull up and pull down and now we have finished with the vn diagram so in the next lecture i'm going to talk about the situation of accelerated rate of climb and then we are going to start moving into the stability and control part of this course so that's when we are going to look at all the things such as longitudinal lateral and directional stability and so on and why the aircraft has all these tails such as the horizontal tail and the vertical tail so i'll end this video here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then